Welcome and thank you for tuning in. You're listening to the Beyond 50 Radio program. I'm Daniel Davis. On the program today, we're going to be talking about something that I find to be very unique. As joining us here on the program today is a representative of a gentleman known as Il Chi Lee. Il Chi Lee is a world renowned educator of energy principles who loves developing the full potential of the mind in each and every one of us. Today we'll learn about our brain operating system, which is composed of our beliefs and preconceptions. Il Chi Lee created a five step system to reach a person's brain's full potential to develop productive, creative, and peaceful power within the brain. Simply called brain education, it is a dynamic combination of Eastern meditative practices and new findings from neuroscience and education. Il Chi Lee, just to give you a bit of background, is a dedicated advocate for a peaceful, sustainable world. He is also a New York Times best-selling author, authoring more than 30 books, and an innovative leader in human brain potential and development. Joining us here on the Beyond 50 radio program today is one particular person who's been able to work with Il Chi Lee. He's going to be talking with us about his work as we discover the power of the brain. I'd like to welcome the Beyond 50 radio program today, our guest, Fatima Bustos Choi. Fatima, thank you for being on the program today. Good morning, and thank you, Daniel, for having me in your program. It's quite an honor for me to be your guest and share with you um, and your audience about brain education, and also, of course, an honor to represent our great teacher, Ilchi Lee. Mm-hmm. Now, Fatima, tell me, when did you first begin to know about Ilchi Lee's work? It was back in 2003. And uh, it was actually after um, kind of an unexpected uh, death in the family. And um, before, during the, the time that I was caring for, well, this was my first husband, um, I used up a lot of energy and emotion. And after he passed away, I was completely, completely exhausted physically, emotionally, mentally and spiritually, and I came across the body and brain practice as I was looking for a way to help me heal at all levels and to gain my energy back and gain my motivation back for life. And uh, I came across one of the centers um, at our Glendale Center in California, and I started training there. And uh, from there, from the classes which are based, on brain education, I started to feel my body again. I started to feel my energy, and I started to regain my hope um, in life. And my journey to my spiritual, um, emotional, uh, physical wholeness began, unbeknownst to me, of course, at that time. Um, But um, from that from that moment, I started to um, train, um, you know, in a way consistently, diligently, and uh, it's kind of amazing where that path has led me to where I am today. Now, let's talk about, first of all, how the way, let's just say, you were using your brain was affecting your life, you know, the outward circumstances, uh, basically the reality there. How did you see it different then than how you do now? That is such a great question, Daniel. It's because I was in the corporate world prior to joining. I, I still do some work with the corporate world, but... I was in the corporate world for 25 years, um, you know, chasing the American dream and climbing that corporate ladder, and I truly used my brain. I was always in my head, and I thought that's how it was to be successful, and I was. Um, I was always thinking. I was always planning. I was like 10 steps ahead. I walked really fast. I think my body was following my brain (laughs) because it was always going, going, going. And um, being in a responsible position, I had to. You know, I was constantly figuring things out. I was constantly solving problems. 
And literally, I was in my head many times. My friends would say to me, hey, where are you? You're, you're, you're not here. You're like, your mind is someplace else. And so I did use it um, a lot, a lot. And honestly, I was successful at it. And so that was my only mode of living, if you will. I, I, I was always in my head. I was always solving, like I said, problems. And I never really, and, but I also considered myself healthy, by the way, at that time. And so I never really paid attention to how my body was um, operating. I was mainly operating from my head. And I thought that's how, that's how you got ahead. I thought that's how you became successful, especially in the corporate world. And um, until I started this practice, did I feel the world of difference. I, I think on my third week of training, I felt my body, and it was such a novelty. It was, it was like this phenomenon that I it was like, whoa, what was this like? And I didn't realize I was so disconnected um, from my body. And so not, you know, it's kind of like not until you experience something different, do you realize what you don't have kind of thing? or what you've been focusing on so much. And I think that's the main difference for me, realizing that I was primarily just thinking, thinking, thinking. And, of course, I was acting too, but I was acting primarily just from my head. And I was not completely integrated with not just my body, but with my soul, with my heart, with my whole being. Now, it's uh, in the book, The Power Brain, which is five steps to upgrading your brain operating system. One of the things that I find intriguing that I thought you might want to go ahead and uh, share in relative detail is the idea of how we integrate the brain both vertically and then also horizontally. Tell us what that means. Well, our brain consists of um, three layers at the uh, horizontal level. At the outermost layer of the brain is what we call the neocortex, and the neocortex is responsible for the thinking brain, the rational brain. The, the second layer beneath the neocortex is the limbic system. The limbic system is the emotional part of the brain. And that at the deepest level is what we call the brain stem, the brain stem is responsible for the autonomous functions in the body like digestion, circulation, the nervous system, but also is, connects us to our intuition. So horizontally, those three layers are operating all the time. Now, an example of that is, um, for example, your mind says you should exercise. You know, like you know that to be something that's good and healthy. But your body says, I don't want to get up. You know, I, I just want to sleep in. If my, the weather might be, you know, kind of cold. And um, so your body says, no. So that's the emotion part, your feeling part. No, I don't really want to get up. I want to sleep in. So now you have your neocortex and your limbic system sort of, kind of vying for your attention, so to speak, right? Like, And so you kind of feel this internal conflict. Should I get up or should I sleep in? Should I get up? Should I sleep in? And then depending on your, uh, on your uh, preferences or habits, rather, depending on your habits, you will either get up and overcome the need for sleep or you will sleep in and find a justification for not going to exercise. Those are the two layers talking to each other. Where does the brain stem come in? The brain stem at the deepest level, because it is functioning autonomously, we say that the purpose of meditation is really quieting the neocortex 
and the limbic system so that you can access your brainstem, which connects us to the deepest parts of who we are, connects us to our intuition, and one would even say connects us to our soul. And so when, so that's the horizontal part of it. The vertical part of it is the brain is divided, as you may know, into two sides, the left side of the brain and the right side of the brain. So the left side um, of the brain uses the functions of logic. Um, things are in black and white. Things are sequential. Things have, um, a, in a way, a rational part of it and concerned with details. The right side, we often say, oh, are the artists, you know, they, they see the big picture, they, they live in the shades of gray, um, they, they're more subjective, whereas the left brain is more logical, and um, also um, not only sees the whole picture, but it doesn't have to make sense necessarily. It doesn't have to be logical. Whereas the, or in sequential uh, manner, whereas the left brain sees things sequentially. And so there are certain education systems and, and of course, professions that um, people gravitate to depending on how they use their brain. Okay, so that's the, the vertical, the left and the right side of the brain. When we, when we use brain education, um, and I should mention the five steps of brain education, we, um, through the different exercises, and of course, the, the five steps involve different exercises, then we start to activate, we start to activate all these functions of our brain. We start to quiet, we start to see the reason for things, we start to feel and we start to go to the deepest level, and then we start to integrate the left side and the right side, enabling us to use our whole brain. What we don't realize, what I certainly didn't realize, was I was living primarily from my neocortex. I was really good at reasoning things and seeing the logic behind things I, and so forth. So I realized... I was primarily in that, uh, using that part of my brain. And um, whatever I felt, I was able to kind of subdue that um, because my thinking brain was so dominant. And I actually was much more, <laughs> um, I preferred much more using my right brain rather than my left. So somehow, there was already sort of a built-in internal conflict going on, but I didn't realize that, of course. I just thought that's the way I was. And so with the five steps of brain education, we start to sensitize the brain, which is step number one. And then as you sensitize the brain through different exercises, in the, using the body, of course, because we truly connect the brain and the body, and the best way to connect to the brain is through the body, interestingly enough. And then as we sensitize the brain, we start to kind of shake the hornet's nest, so to speak, and start to, um, start to jiggle. <laughs> it's a pre, uh, a preset state, whether that's only thinking or that's only emoting and so forth. Um, and then the second step, which is brain versatilizing, as the brain is sensitized, the brain starts to become more flexible, starts to open up. And again, we do this through different exercises. And as the body starts to be more flexible, so does the brain. And in brain versatilizing, the brain starts to open up. So in my case, I started to feel my emotions and honor my emotions instead of suppressing them. Um, and I started also to see the value of um, seeing things objectively instead of always coming from my subjective point of view. 
So as we do, as the brain is more flexible, then um, we start to release a lot of um, past memories, especially negative traumatic ones, to then um, heal the brain and enable it then to, which is step number four, start to integrate the left side, the right side, and also integrate and resolve any conflicts between the, the neocortex or the rational brain, the emotion, and uh, be able to get to the brain stem, which is the deepest part of the brain. And with the brain, that's step number four, which is brain integrating, for what purpose, which is step number five, which is then brain mastery. So as we go deep in, deep inside of the brain and of who we are, we start to then, our, our true purpose starts to bubble up because we're no longer suppressing it. We're now really operating from the whole self, from the whole brain. And now we start to, to connect with, not only who we are, but why we are here, what our life purpose is. And so that's kind of what happened to me because I thought, well, I've kind of achieved a certain level of um, like corporate success, and I thought, okay, well, this is it. You know, I'm happy, but I really wasn't. Um, I, I thought I was, <laughs> but as I trained and as I went through myself, brain education, I started to connect with my purpose, with my vision, and the actualization of that is my having a, a center of, of my own, um, a center, you know, of course, which is part of the larger organization of body and brain. And now I feel I'm at a place where this is really why I was called to be here on this earth, is, is to help other people awaken their brains awaken their beings, awaken their souls, um, as I have been. I hope that's helpful, Daniel. I, I agree, too, Fatima, and I think it's really exciting when people can come to know when you can live in service of others. And that doesn't mean that you're out there kind of doing things for other people just for the sake of doing things for other people, but what you're doing is you're awakening the special purpose or reason that you have for being here. You sort of are how should I say, exploring the mystery of why, which is probably the single biggest question that all of us have. You know, why are we here? Why am I alive? You know, And yeah. as you do that, you will see more and more opportunities for you to stretch and use these gifts in only the way you can. For instance, you know, I'll give you an idea. Growing up, I was a chatterbox. I was the kind of kid that always ended up going to the principal's office for disrupting the class. Okay? <laughs> As I got into the world of work, let's say that we're following the rational mind as you were talking about, the, the logical one. Uh, I went into the world of work with uh, you know, the idea that I'm just supposed to go at work to pay my bills. I mean, that's the way mm. I was raised. You know, Nobody ever yeah. said, why don't you find out what your special gift is, you know, and go out there and share that with the world. They said, you just need to go out and get a job and be sure that you pay your bills so you can get out of the house and we don't have to support you anymore, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And so in the world of work, I found a lot of things that uh, had me working with my hands. Well, you know, when my mouth moved, my hands stopped, so I was getting in trouble a lot for that. And you can get to a point, for instance, where you can become jaded, because you feel like there's something wrong with you. Now, mm -hmm. it wasn't until I began to, and it was a sort of a spiritual awakening in and of myself uh, in my early to mid-20s, uh, where uh, it seemed like the right people were coming along saying, well, you know, try reading this book and see where that takes you, and then this, and then I began developing myself. And as I began to move into a realm where I worked less with my hands and more with my mouth, I began to be, feel highly rewarded for this, not just mm -hmm. financially, but also just getting up each day thinking, geez, I can't believe I get to go out there and talk to people and I'm getting paid for this, you know, sort of a thing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so you, as you talk about, or L. Chi Lee talks about in his book, and as you so eloquently have been putting it, as you can discover what this special purpose is, 
you begin to find a purpose for yourself, that why as I'm talking mm-hmm. about. And the more that mm-hmm. you develop that along with your brain, the more mm-hmm. you become an expert, a master in this area. And that's mm-hmm. truly when you want to think of life compensation, whether it's financial, material, spiritual, every which way that you can think of, it almost comes to you effortless. And that's what we're talking mm-hmm. about here today is truly mm-hmm. something like that, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, that's so great. Um, I like what you said, life compensation. Mm. Of course, many times we think of compensation only in financial terms or only in the physical realm. But I I was touched by what you just said. I mean, you know, this is my lifetime work, and many times I say that I am working (laughs) Harder now than when I was in the corporate world, and boy, did I work hard there. But for some reason, I just feel like I have endless energy. Or I have boundless. And it doesn't my... feel like work. <laughs> <laughs> it, no, exactly. It doesn't at all. And I think, I think you touched on that. I mean, it's that lifetime reward. You know, it's that lifetime compensation in such um, a profound and um, a way that uh, goes beyond um, just having money. I mean, money is important. I, I value it. I appreciate it. Um, but I, at this stage in my life, I truly can f- feel the difference between, between where I was, um, you know, 25, 30 years ago in terms of where my focus I think that's the where my focus was and where my focus is today. And I still do some um, consulting work in the corporate arena, and I now feel like, to me, that's like the, the <clears throat> next uh, frontier to truly bring about wholeness. Because like you said, I'm getting a job to you know, get paid and support yourself or make a living and I think that's been such the focus mainly of work is make a living rather than work becoming a means to a higher purpose um, and to a more whole, holistic purpose. Moving toward mastery, in fact, uh, I've had discussions about the idea of mastery with people. And uh, usually one of the mm-hmm. more consistent things that you see is whether a look of confusion or just a specific question how do you know when you're experiencing mastery, whether it's yourself or through someone else? And I say it really gets very simple. Mastery is recognized to a point where you see someone doing something. Let's say they're blowing glass or maybe they're playing the game of basketball, whatever the case is, and they make it look so easy that you think you can actually just pick it up and do exactly what they're doing right now. Mm. <laughs> and then when That's you go true. and you start to do the task or whatever it is that you're believing you can do so easily, you realize, wow, they made this look so easy. I thought I could just go ahead and do that. That's, <laughs> that's mastery right there. Yes, yes, yes. That is, um, I agree. Why does it look so easy? Why does it look so easy? And why, to me, I feel why is because it becomes second nature to us. It, um, it comes from within us. We actually stop thinking. That's so kind of fascinating. When we are at that mastery level, when we master something, the brain, the thinking brain actually quiets down because now we operate from almost at that brainstem level where it's autonomous, it's second nature, it's just happening. And it's coming from the heart. It's coming from the soul. It's not, that's why it's so effort, it comes across so effortless um, because it's so much our natural and true self. What I would call our authentic self is living according to our truest nature. And when we do that, just like flowers easily bloom, do you see flowers bloom with effort? No. Everything in nature happens so effortlessly because they're simply fulfilling their natural, um, their true uh, nature. Um, for us, 
to have mastery at the same time to get to that level of mastery, we have to practice. We have to train. We have to be sincere and committed to the training. I was told once that the uh, renowned cellist Yo-Yo Ma, he was asked um, if he still practices, you know, the cello, and he said, every single day. You know, one would think that he could, of course, play the cello in his sleep, and I'm sure he can. And we think that once you get to that level um, that you don't train or you don't practice, but I think to the contrary. Um, We practice, we train every day, um, and we keep um, uh, strengthening that energy because that kind of energy can also fade. And so training is key to mastery. I would think, too, that in training that what happens is is that you develop to such a level that as you were talking about, your soul now recognizes you have finally gotten out of the way, so let me just show you how it's done. (laughs) And that's where you lose yourself and you find yourself all at the same time. Yes, I love that. You lose and you find. That's so true. And also, um, when you get to that level, the day is not complete without it. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, it's just like the day is not the same without, you know, without that training. And with um, the brain education system, it truly gets to. Um, it gets to you in such a way that if you don't, if you don't practice, or if I don't practice, if I don't train, if I don't do even just one of those exercises, I feel like something is missing. Um, but the, the power of brain education is the completeness of the system, the the truly integrating the brain, all the parts of the brain that we talked about earlier, but also integrating it with the body. So many modalities and methods focus on one or the other, um, whether it's just physical training, even you know training athletes, and of course there's a lot of the motivation aspect of it. Um, and, and actually it's what really makes them great, uh, great athletes. But in our system, it's so purposeful, it's so intentional, it's designed so that the, we truly use um, our, our whole being, uh, we use our body, we use our brain, we integrate all these in exercises that are quite joyful and um, easy, doable, anyone can do them, but they're so effective and powerful. You know, with the few minutes that we have left, Fatima, if you could, why don't we go over at least one or perhaps two exercises a person can start with now to be able to get themselves, you know, into what we're talking about here, getting that power brain, so to speak. Yes. Um, Are you game? Are you okay if I give you some instructions as well? Always. Okay, great. Wonderful. Okay, well, I can simply... Um, follow the steps in a short period of time. So with brain sensitizing, one of the ones that I do every single day is so simple, it's so easy, is tapping, okay? So if you can stretch your, um, first, let's tap our brain. So with your fingertips, tap the uh, top of your brain and any place in your brain. So when we're doing this, we're actually activating the cells of the neocortex, the cells of the limbic system, and releasing a lot of tension, which often accumulates from the chest all the way up to the brain. So please tap. And now as you're tapping, please smile. (laughs) Okay, smile and feel, feel the energy that is being activated in your brain. And now bring your fingertips to your face. Open your mouth. Open the jaws. Breathe in through the nose. Breathing out. And now bring your hands. Now this time tapping with your your hands. And tap your chest 
and tap. I'm tapping too as I'm talking with you. Tap your chest and tap your lungs. Keep breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. And keep smiling. And now stretch one of your arms, your right arm or left arm, and then tap all the way. And then clap. And tap all the way again, back up to the shoulder. Okay, and then tap your other arm. And clap again. And then go back up and tap your shoulders. And this time, tap your chest a little bit harder. I mean, until you can feel it. And then breathe out. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. ha. Now, let me just ask you, let me take just a moment here and ask you, how do you feel? I feel a sense of a real grounded, present awareness, like I'm actually Mm. really right here. Okay. Okay. And how does your upper body feel since that's what we primarily have? It's very energized. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. Why? Because... Just simply tapping, you sensitize the cells in the brain and the cells in the body. Like the cells in the brain says, oh, I'm awake. This feels good. And that message is communicated to your body. Okay, now let's just do one more, and that is breathing. Okay, so if you can, bring your hands. Um, to your chest level, Daniel, and if you can, have the palms facing each other about an inch apart. Okay. okay. Now, all right, now this time, could you go ahead and tap your fingertips? Okay, tapping your fingertips actually activates the acupressure points in the fingertips, which are the most sensitive uh, acupressure, acupressure points in the body. Okay, tap, tap, tap. Okay, can you feel something? Can you feel like tingling or vibration? Yes, absolutely. Very good. Okay, now stop. And keeping your palms about an inch apart. Now I'd like for you to focus. Focus on the sensation between your palms. Okay, focus, focus. And now if you could breathe in. Deeply through the nose and breathe out through the mouth. And now, one more time. This time, as you breathe in, open your palms apart. And then as you breathe out, bring your palms together. Breathe in, open, feel the energy between your palms. This is what we call energy meditation that integrates left and right sides of the brain and quiets the neocortex and the limbic system so you can access your brain stem. Breathing in. And breathing out. As you breathe in, make a big smile. As you breathe out, exhale. Again, as you breathe in, imagine taking in pure, fresh energy. And as you breathe out, imagine exhaling stagnant energy, stressful energy. And feel the sensation between your palms.
Now you're quieting your mind. Now you are feeling your energy. And as you focus deeply, you can connect with your soul. You can connect with your life purpose. Breathing in and breathing out. Okay, now slowly open your eyes, and how do you feel? Definitely better than average. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So these are a sort of integrated steps one and two and four, um, and, and so there are many other exercises that we do in class to truly, you know, Wake up the brain. The brain operating system consists of wake up and pay attention. And so we do that through tapping, bouncing, um, being like a child again, you know. And then wake up and pay attention. Good news makes a good brain. So we, we um, help people to focus on what's working. We help people to focus on what's good because just as bad news makes a bad brain, Good news makes a good brain. So, again, focusing people on what gives life. Um, And then choose, and it will happen. So as you make a choice, a change begins with choice. And choosing your, your true self or choosing your vision, choosing your dream. So all of these are incorporated, the brain operating system, with the five steps of brain education. So all of these things you can do, right? Absolutely. Um, They're easy to do, and you can do them definitely. (laughs) So it's a wonderful thing. The Power Brain is the title of the book, Five Steps to Upgrading Your Brain Operating System. Our guest joining us today, Fatima, is joining us here. Fatima Bustos Joy. Fatima, thank you for joining us here on the Beyond 50 radio program. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much, Daniel. It was a great opportunity to be here to be your guest and, like I said, to share the work of our great teacher, Il Chile. And is there a website people can go and find out more? Absolutely. So if you can go to change your, www.changeyourenergy.com, that is our online um, channel, distribution channel, you can actually um, – uh, you can actually click on many of the lectures of Il Chile. So www.change, C-H-A-N-G-E, your, Y-O-U-R, energy.com. And Very it's a good. wonderful accumulation of a lot of our work, a lot of Il Chile's teachings, and um, a lot of the exercises uh, that we have. Very good. Fatima, thank you for being on the program today and getting myself ready for the day. (laughs) Okay. Thank you, too, Daniel. Um, Have a wonderful day. Have a power brain day. Will do. Absolutely. Thank you. (laughs) Okay. Goodbye now. We want to thank you, all you power brains out there, for joining us and lending an ear. You can also discover more at beyond50radio.com. That is the number 50. We do encourage you to sign up for our weekly e-newsletter. Keep up to date with what's going on in the world of Beyond 50 as well as our upcoming shows. I'm Daniel Davis. Thank you for joining us. This is the Beyond 50 radio program. And remember, live your day past halfway.